So this is the moment I started my very first cross country race and this is the moment I realised what I got myself into. Wind back the clock seven and a half years to the start of my running journey and cross country hadn't even crossed my mind. But as years have gone on I started to realise what an important role cross country plays not just for club running but for the wider running community itself. So without any cross country spikes and not a clue what I was letting myself in for, I laced up some trail shoes and took part in my very first cross country. Alright, I'm cross country ready. So all I've got to do is take this off and get ready to go half an hour now until the race. I've done a quick warm up already. So just getting ready and feeling good. In terms of shoes, that's an interesting one. I don't actually have any cross country spikes. For someone who loves testing shoes and stuff like that, cross country spikes are not something I own. I did bring my dragonflies just in case I thought, oh, I'll try the spikes. But actually, do you know what? For this one, as I'm on week one of my training and this is just going to be a bit of fun, I'm just going to use some trail shoes. The Essex Fuji Light 2s. Uh, so we'll see how we go today. Really excited. I've heard the course is great fun. It's going to be very boggy at times. I am going to take the head camera with me and take you guys along the journey. Legs are feeling tired from this week's training already. Two big workouts. This is going to be a hard, hard day. Let's see how we get on.
So what a day, what a race and what an experience. Popped my cross country cherry and absolutely delighted to do so. That was brutal and great fun all at the same time. And just before we dive into those three things I want to talk about, just a very quick race recap and how I approached the race. It was a case of I was coming off the back of a couple of decent workouts in the week, a VO2 max workout and a 10k specific workout. So legs were a little bit tired uh, leading into it, but I was really fresh and ready because it was obviously week one of a new training series. So I felt good going into it. In the warm up, the legs felt a bit heavy, but I was kind of aerobically and in terms of myself feeling really, really good. So I was excited to give it a good go. What I didn't realise was just how bad of an idea it was to wear trail shoes. I really should have that week just bought some, used them, and even if they were terrible, I think to myself, I've only got three or four fixtures to use them on this year, and then I can invest in some more, but just grab a pair. That would be a top tip uh, right there for you. So. From the perspective of the race, I went out on the first lap and I just kind of took it easy, sat back a bit and just kind of scoped things out, see where I might possibly break a leg in the trail shoes, where the steep hills going down were, where the climbs were, and just really scope it out and feel it out. And then in the second two loops, uh, just kind of start to pick people off and move through the pack. At the end of the day, it wasn't particularly anything special from my perspective. I think it came like 60th out of like 215 or something. Um, and I just I just had good fun out there. But that first lap was all about feeling it out. And then the second one was just starting to chip away, work up the field, uh, take through some, uh, go through some people. I got pipped to the post at the end, as you probably saw in that last clip. Um, I came round the final uh, bend and went past the chap in the white and black vest. He then sat right on my heels, uh, clipped my heels once. Uh, he was that close. He was obviously using me as a windbreaker because we went into the wind. It was crazy at that point. But then he just kind of came out of my slipstream and burst past me at the end. Fair play to him. It was a great finish there. And it was just great to be part of such a fantastic running community event, like seeing all the local clubs, seeing local runners there to talk to, just seeing some familiar faces. It was just great fun. So in terms of the race itself, it was just kind of like a bit of a warm up for me. I want to get some spikes now and do better in the next fixture. It's kind of giving me a hunger now to go out there. Now I know kind of what it's all about. Uh, put the feelers out there. I kind of feel like in the next one, I'll be ready to, to go a little bit harder and to have a bit more of a go at it. The first thing that really did take me by surprise was just how hard I ended up working. I actually registered the highest heart rate I have ever registered on any run that I've ever seen. So 185 was was what my heart rate topped out on that day. Uh, the highest I've ever seen it is 183. I've never got it higher than that in any session or any race or anything. It's usually 182 it might top out in a race where I'm really flagging and hill stuff I might get 183 um, but to go to 185 was absolutely mad and I didn't obviously play the audio from the clips. I put music overlaying a lot of it but if you listen to some of it my breathing was just so intense and I think basically it shocked me how hard uh, I worked. I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was a hilly course. So obviously you expect that kind of stuff. I run these sorts of courses and kind of trails, not like the mud and everything, but the kind of ups and downs. I run that in the forest. So I knew I was going to be in uh, for a good up and down challenge. But I think there's just something different. I think it's the terrain, the softness of the ground, uh, the bogginess, just everything. Trying to keep some kind of momentum through some of those sections was absolutely insane. So basically, my first point is don't be shocked if you find out you've worked flipping hard and you do set a max heart rate like I did. And the second thing that shocked me was actually just how key pacing was. And let me dive into this a little bit more because obviously, naturally, we all know pacing is key when it comes to races. But what tends to happen is when you go to like a road race or whatever, you'll get the group of people that go out quite hard uh, and then fade towards the end. And you get the people that start conservatively and work their way through. The thing is, when you go out hard, which is kind of what a lot of cross-country people do, and you, you watch um, people over in the States do cross-country, and you see a lot of the, the collegiate workouts where they practice going out hard on some reps, you know, because they want to get into a good position as they reach the first bend, as things narrow, because obviously their fields are so massive. So you see people practice that sort of stuff. Um, but with cross-country, if you go out hard, you're not just going to fade. You're, absolute gonna, you're absolutely going to die a death, to be honest with you towards the end the casualties and the people walking and just the people's form and everything in that third and final lap was absolutely insane so naturally like I've gone out hard in a race and I've struggled towards the end and my form started to go a bit but I've been able to maintain some kind of relatively decent effort there is no way you could do that in cross country by the looks of it unless you're a really well trained cross country running done it season after season 
I think if you're a new beginner, just be careful. Like I went out with the plan of scoping out the first lap, mainly because I didn't want to fall on my ass. Um, but if I'd had spikes on, who knows what I've done. I might have gone at it from the gun and then absolutely been lying on the floor by the end of lap three and everything would have deteriorated. Thankfully, I did that decision because of the shoes. Uh, and that actually then enabled me to pick people off. By lap two, there were some, <laughs> some really bad runners out there that were really struggling. But by lap three, some of the people's breathing, people were walking, people were just sat on the... There was one chap that was sat on the side at one point. Uh, it was just absolute carnage. So my number one or my number two tip for any of you thinking about cross-country, trying it for the first time where you're quite new to it, just go steady on that first lap. And I think the third and final thing that I do want to just make very, very clear is shoe choice. Now I have to say, I thought, I was in two minds about buying spikes at the beginning. I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna try cross country and see what it's like. Thankfully, I loved it, it was brutal, but I loved it. And it's made me hungry to try more and get involved in more fixtures for the Gloucester League this year. I'm not sure how many more I can do, hopefully another couple at least. Um, so I'm gonna get some spikes, I'm gonna invest in them. If you're thinking of doing cross country, Country, don't do what I did and go or I won't get spikes I'll just try it in trail shoes and see how I get on at the end of the day I know um, I appreciate at the moment financial uh, situations are tight for so many people myself included like it's a tough time at the moment with all the prices of everything going up in terms of relative to shoe prices cross-country spikes can be relatively affordable a lot of them are around the 50 60 pound mark and you can get so many on discount for around 30 or 40 so what my plan is gonna be is actually just to get some discounted pair of spikes and maybe just spend 30, 40 pounds. And if they see me through three or four races, I get the whole pound per mile thing isn't gonna be great. But if there's no, if I don't end up using them again or they're just not, they don't work that well and I only can just squeeze my feet in there and they hurt after 10K, but I can just about get away with it. It's not really that much loss. It's not like me investing in an alpha fly and finding that I don't like it and then can't return them. I feel like I can chuck 30 quid and a pair of spikes, just get some, just try them out and see how they go. So if you're in this position as well, please don't take uh, trail shoes, don't try them out, do get some spikes, do use those and do invest if you can. So there we go, that's a wrap on my first cross country race ever and the things that shocked me. I tell you what, I kind of had an inkling about a lot of this stuff, but I've got to be honest with you, it was way harder than I thought. And hopefully you guys benefit with it in some way. I'd love to hear from some of you veterans at cross country and hear your top tips. If you've got any, please share them, not just for the people out there watching, but for me as well, because I definitely want to go into the next race more prepared. But that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like. I will leave on screen a link to my first week's 10k training series if you missed it go check it out and I'll leave another video on there that's hopefully useful to you guys as well please do consider subscribing to the channel hopefully I'll see you on one of the other two videos that I popped up there share this with your friends and I'll see you on the next one until then